and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Let's stop there just a moment as we think about the present sufferings of creation itself. We see here in verse 19 that there is an expectation from creation itself. They're expecting something. And for what is it that creation is waiting for an eager expectation? Well, verse 19 says, it's for the sons of God to be revealed. What's it talking about here? Well, the material world is waiting for the time when humanity has been made new. In other words, the resurrection of the body. But in the meantime, it's experiencing frustration. There's a great frustration. And the material world, you see, the Bible tells us, was impacted in ways beyond our present understanding by the sin of mankind. In Genesis, the third chapter, when Adam and Eve had sinned, God said to Adam, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. You see, something happened. God subjected the whole creation because man was its crowning glory. And when man fell into sin, God subjected the entire creation to his curse. And as a result, things happened that had not been happening before the sin of man. And in fact, Science has a second law of thermodynamics. This is when it originated. And that means in just a very brief summary, it isn't the whole second law, but basically what it says is that things are deteriorating. Things go from a, a bigger thing to a smaller thing. They're deteriorating. And we know that's true. In fact, they even notice that, that the whole universe seems to be dying, slowing down. And so we see that somehow God caused this to occur. And, and it just messed up everything. Before man sinned, animals didn't eat one another. They were all vegetarians. Now they do. They didn't fight one another. Now they do. Everything in the world is suffering. And so there's this frustration, this groaning of creation. But there's also, in verse 21, going to be a liberation. Creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. There's going to be a time when the resurrection of all humanity occurs and the world is made new. We read about this in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 21, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. And this is when creation is going to experience its freedom, its liberation from the curse. In fact, the Apostle
Apostle John said in his first epistle in chapter 2, verse 17, the world and its desires pass away. But God is going to liberate it with a new heaven and new earth. Let's read further, beginning in verse 22. Now we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our lives. <coughs> Excuse me. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. As we think about the pains of the Christian, the Bible says here, Paul says, we, we groom similarly, similarly. In other words, sort of like creation is growing, we experience, as human beings, we experience a lot of the pains that creation in general does. Do you know that, that all of you, you too are deteriorating? And young folks, if you don't believe it now, you will. You will believe it. And there's a lot of things that we groan about. But it says not only do we grow in a, groan in a similar fashion as creation itself, but we groan in see, not only are we physical beings, but we're spiritual beings. And having the Holy Spirit within us as believers, there's an even deeper groaning. You know why? Because we know the reason the world has experienced its problems. And we know that the only escape, the only help for our world is to turn to the Savior. We know that we have loved ones who are not yet right with God. And it causes us to groan inwardly that they might come to know Him. But not only do we groan inwardly, but we wait eagerly. Because we have the first fruits of the Spirit. Yeah, Paul, Paul really helps us understand what this entails in his letter to the Ephesians. In chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, he says, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of His glory. You see, God has given us the Spirit as a deposit, Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know as long as we are at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. And so we wait eagerly because we have God's guarantee of the Holy Spirit. Now, Paul has all said, already told us that we have received the adoption of sons Heart. Spiritually, our spirit. But it will not be complete 
until the resurrection and we have a new body changed to be like his. And these are the promises. That is, the actions declaration. Notice it again in verse 23. We ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly for the adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. We mentioned this last week or, or maybe the week before. We pointed this verse out because a lot of people wonder, well, you know, as Christians, if we, what if we don't we have enough faith? We just ask God, we just ask the Lord to, for example, if we're, if we're sick or we have a loved one that's sick and we just pray for them that it's automatic that he's going to heal them. No, it isn't automatic because the redemption of the body isn't yet. And we have to depend upon the Lord. We see that we have an expectation. As Paul wrote to the Philippians in chapter 3, he says, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body, meaning his meaning Christ's glorious body as he experienced in his resurrection. In the meantime, we live in a body that is decaying, in a body that still is enticed by sin, and entices us to sin. And so why, when I pray, knowing God can do this, knowing God loves me and He loves people, I pray for them, for, for example, physical healing, or maybe financial help, that it doesn't always happen. It isn't a problem of faith. The problem is we don't know always what to pray for. But God has a solution for that. Listen to what he is. it is. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, what weakness, in the fact that we have a limited understanding of the perfect will and plan of God. But the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, helps us in our weakness. You know why? Because He intercedes for us. And the Holy Spirit, being God, knows what God wants. And so when he speaks to the Father on our behalf, he always speaks exactly what the Father wants and therefore gets what the Father will be with. Now, that's the reason that James tells us in James chapter 4, he reminds us, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. So you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. Some of you have struggled trying to figure out, you know, God, what do you want me to do with my life? especially young people, as they finish up with high school and think about a career, maybe going on to college, and they wonder, God, what is it you want me to do with my mind? And that's a difficult thing to know. Some people struggle for years 
trying to discover God. What is it? You know why? Because God doesn't always tell us. All right. This is January 22nd. And on the 23rd, here's what I want you to do with your life. God doesn't do that, does He? He doesn't give us that specific. But you know what? That's okay. Because the Holy Spirit knows what God has in mind. And He can guide us and direct us. Our present body is weak and corrupt. So we don't have the complete knowledge of God's will, step by step. But God has given us the Holy Spirit to help us in our weakness. I want to ask you something as we close. Are you growing? Are you growing? Are you growing just like creation's growing? Or are you growing even more intently? Because you're groaning not only through your own experience, but through the influence of the Holy Spirit. Are we groaning, for example, in a way that would cause us to pray for our family and our neighbor? and our world to know the true and living God and Savior. <coughs> Are we growing with the intensity that Jesus wrote when he looked out over the people, the nation that he had delivered from life and given message after message Sent prophet after prophet, blessing after blessing. And he began to groan and weep, and he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered you as a hen gathers its chicks under the wings? That you would not. That is, you would not come. Can we grow like that? Gracious Father, we thank you for the provisions that you've made. We thank you for the guarantee of your Holy Spirit that one day the world itself will be revealed that we are the children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, I ask as you have spoken to our needs today through your word, I pray that if there's anyone here who needs to make a personal commitment 